Welcome to another episode of Find Your Groove. It's Friday, Find Your Groove Day. It's always a great way for me, and I hope for you to to kick off the weekend. The weekend, woohoo! And here in Canada, where I am, it's a long weekend, so I'm really looking forward to just kicking back and enjoying the time and being in the yard, and uh, hopefully the sun's going to come out. I'm really praying for that. I'm your host. My name is Lynn Burnett. You can learn more about me at Lynn, that's L-I-N-E, Burnett.com. We have all our shows there that you can listen to my fabulous guests because I'm telling you, I have the best guests out there. So you can go there and click on the link and find all my past shows, listen to them. And I'd love to to get some feedback from you, what you think, uh, anything that you heard in a, in a show that has piqued your interest that you want to know, and if all the contact information also is there with each episode of my guests and all the great offers that they have in, in their events that are going on. So I do urge you to keep in touch and, and to reach out to my guests because they are fabulous and they're always open. So Thank you again for joining me. I want to give a shout out to my fabulous team at Bold Radio Station, my producer Nesha, our other producer Damien, uh, the woman that keeps everything flowing with our great guests, Inged, my partner Kim. We have such a great time working together and bringing you quality content, amazing guests, um, and also educating people on the power of online radio and the programs that we have, we've got a great program gearing up for the fall, uh, a mastermind for hosts to keep you going, keep you motivated, keep you on top of the brainstorming and the fabulous ways that you can, as we like to say, pimp out your show <laughs> to let people know uh, that you've got a message and that you've got a voice and how important that is and that your voice and conversation always leads to healing. And that's what we're all about So I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Bold Radio, healthiswealthforlife.com. You know, each product with this in the Ketopia program really leverages the latest breakthroughs in science, nutrition, and ketone technology. You know, health is so important, and we're going to definitely find that out with my guest, Carl Brooks, today. Health is a habit. It's not an event. Don't leave it to chance. Ketopia is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. I am so not into diets. And it's really revolutionizing the way millions of people look and feel in their skins. So be sure to go to healthiswealthforlife.com. So I, we need to get going. We need to get this, uh, this conversation started. So are you, uh, are you ready and ready to go, Carl? I certainly am. Woohoo! Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know it's evening for you. It's morning for me. So we're hitting everybody today. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love the international feel of it. So ready for action. Oh, I, I love the international feel that we can just reach out and get to know so many people. And so I thank you for reaching out to me because you've got an amazing story. And Find Your Groove is really about, you know, letting people know that they're not alone, that that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what happens that that you can find your groove in life again and that you know what you choose not to do matters just as much as what you choose to do in life wow. and you definitely yeah. chose big yeah yeah oh i love that i love that so much and it isn't that very profound uh i uh, i heard recently it's not my quote but i thought i'd just throw one in immediately when someone said recently that the biggest ideas the most creative ideas are in the graveyard Yes. Yes. I so agree with you. Yeah. I, I might have heard that. It, it's <laughs> true. It's true. Our biggest problems, our deepest fears, the big, the things that we're most afraid of are the things that we need to bring forth. That's where the magic is. Absolutely. Now, you do that for your clients. And just to let everybody know that you are a... Um, a coach, you're a business coach, and you have more than 20 years experience in marketing and communication. <coughs> Excuse me. In the UK... And the Netherlands, and you've worked for some major companies. And you, what I like, um, as I was learning more about you, is that, and I love this, is clarity of mission is crucial to, I think, you say for business success, but I think for life. Mm. Yeah, yeah, to, to know where you're going 
um, to know that you know when you get in the car of life that you have a map in front of you that you are intentionally consciously choosing the direction and choosing the roads that you're going on it's rather than being uh, just at the at the influence of uh, outside influences in your life it's so important to be able to stand in your own mission and to choose your own route so clarity of mission that's really one of the pinnacle things that I teach that's true mm. I love that now you work you work with big corporations is that primarily who you work with or do you work with you know small business uh, home office entrepreneurs startups Sure. Well, I come from the corporate world. So my background of 20, 22 years in the corporate world, working for Air France and KLM and British Telecom, uh, really propelled by uh, my in my youth kind of conditioned by culture and by parents and through my own choices. You no, know, I do take responsibility for it to stay in the corporate world. And for, I, I noticed for a while that although I, I was doing very well, very successful, that I really wasn't finding my groove in the corporate world. And uh, as, as we all know and experience in life, we go from one uh, period in our life to another. And uh, once at one point, you know, fate or spirit comes a knocking. I'm certainly a big believer in hearing that calling or, and responding to it or not. And I really responded to that calling my own way and decided then to jump in to becoming a entrepreneur, a business coach for individuals. So I've really made now the step from the corporate world to helping individuals, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs to build their business. When you look back in your life, when you look back to little Carl. Do you see, do you think, oh, I had tendencies that being an entrepreneur was going to be in your future? Yeah, I love that question. I did like the reference to little, little Carl. It made me smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's great because suddenly you put this picture of me of, of, of another small. Um, yeah, there was a couple of things that really kind of pointed the way for this. The first of all is that I used to love to organize treasure hunts. You know, these little oh, treasure yeah. hunts that you arrange for your friends and you, you spend like a, a day or the weekend hiding little treasures, which are often really nothing, really either a pen or a ruler or something. It's somewhere yeah. in the bushes in the trees, somewhere around your neighborhood. Then I would actually type out this in- entire clan where people could follow and you know I put I would even put sweets in the bushes so they would find them and off they would go all my friends would go off and they used to love these treasure hunts that I used to organize and it really became something that I I love to do and even to this day uh, <laughs> on, a, on a larger scale uh, arranging treasure hunts not in terms of finding sweets or or stationery but now in, in in terms of finding your your mission your clarity in your business the programs you want to offer the energy and the confidence to make it all happen as well as this high performance mindset so the 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 pieces of treasure have be, have moved slightly yeah. in, but, but the, the principle is still the same <laughs> so yeah I guess Absolutely. the Carl and Big Carl are doing the same thing. <laughs> I love that. Was that something that you thought you would do? Was it was work for yourself? And did you ever imagine that that was something you wanted to do? No, I didn't. When I was younger, I didn't. Uh, but I kind of I had a lot of teachers on the way, and not the teachers that you thought that you think would move me forward. These were people who were. Uh, who didn't perhaps see my full potential, um, who were in the corporate world. You know, we all have these managers and directors around us yeah. and people around us who, you know, they just don't see our full potential. And for long, the longest time, I was using that to get that energy of um, Carl, you know, you can't do this or this is not for you, uh, knowing deep inside me that that was just BS. I mean, I, I felt really an innate, intrinsic feeling of, hey, I'm, I'm much more than this. But it scared me to death to mm, yeah. think of leaving the corporate world and a steady income to jack it all in, as it were. You know, I could hear the voice of my, my late father and my mother and, and everyone around me. Uh, I didn't even have to hear the voices physically, but even in my own mind saying, well, what the hell are you doing? Um, so there was, a lot, there, was a, there was a lot of resistance in my mind to make this step. But yeah, it, it became, it became uh, really a necessity for me to move forward because the pain of staying where I I was and not realizing my full potential and hearing this calling and not acting on it, this 
this uh, pain was causing uh, havoc in my life. It resulted in some addictions. It, had, it evolved. It, 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 I was overcompensating, overcompensating for not being happy in the corporate world, and that's what happens. With me, it turned up as, as addictions, and with other people, it can just symptomize. People can literally get ill and sick or burn out, and it, and of course, the corporate world sees this as a burnout or being sick. But actually, what in a lot of the cases, what's going on is people are just not answering this higher calling to do the work uh, or, or to get the, the, the great gifts out into the world that they are here to, to put out there. That's really my, my opinion on that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Like Tony Robbins says, you know, life leaves clues. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. there's so much <clears throat> training, societal training that that has us ignoring these clues and not listening and not being aware of our own lives and who we are and you're right these and these symptoms are all around us and we tend to ignore it so and like you and I so I want to get to this pivotal moment in your life that happened to you um you know I I had that happen for me as well where pivotal pivotal that switched me you know my background was all working in law Mm. I worked in law firms and now I work at home and I, you know, I, I did coach training of my practice and here I am in radio, uh, which I never, ever, but I guess, you know, I remember me little being told I talked too much. So <laughs> I guess it was just inevitable that this is where I was going to end yeah. up. We have these pivotal moments. And then fortunately for a lot of us, it, it, they are profound and they're not just, uh, a general malaise or being unhappy or, things like that for you and I, they were quite profound pivotal moments. And for you, that happened in 2013. Yeah. What happened there? Yeah. So I was still working for the, in the corporate world and I woke up one morning, uh, very suddenly with the left side of my body completely paralyzed. And I, I had a huge pain in my back. So I went to the doctor thinking there was something wrong with my back. Maybe I twisted it in the middle of the night. I don't know. And she just uh, – she did a few tests on me. She told me to grab the desk and she, she, she held my hand and asked me if I felt anything. And I said, I said no. Uh, but all, the whole, whole time, this pain in the back. And, and I just wanted her just to say, well, no, send me off to the chiropractor or something. Do something about my back. She says, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the neurologist. I said, neurologist? I mean, come on. You know, I'm, I'm, a 40, I'm 43 years old at the time and uh, I certainly didn't think there was anything wrong with my brain. But uh, that afternoon, I had an, M- an emergency MRI scan, and the doctors found an abscess the size of a small golf ball uh, deep in my brain, which was uh, pressing against uh, my nervous system and literally shut off the whole left side of my body. So it was yeah. it was really traumatic. I mean, particularly when you see the image of the the, the, the cross section of your brain and you see this white blob right in the middle and you just look at each other and like oh my god my life my life is oh. over so it was a huge uh, wake up call for me fortunately I, I uh, it was fully treatable and uh, I had uh, I was on um uh, antibiotics for three weeks by intravenous fit, uh, drip in the hospital and that was enough to really reduce the abscess and uh, I walked out of the hospital on my own two feet uh, feeling a, <laughs> like a like a new person reborn again because that whole experience, those long days and nights in the hospital and surrounded by uh, people in, in, in agony and a few of them were also you know, were, were terminally ill uh, and being in that whole situation and dealing with my own recovery was um, was such a revelation for me to, to wake up and to finally own the fact that I've been given this second chance in life and to make something of it. And what better motiva- motivation than that than to recover from serious illness um, and and really trigger yourself to move into this journey onto this path and uh, and that was that was really really the moment when I knew that this was for me to become yeah. a coach yeah you know those moments like whoa that's like face first into a brick wall to just make you wake up isn't it yeah yeah and you would think that 25 years of the Oprah Winfrey show would have done that a lot <laughs> earlier <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And my whole, 
and my entire personal development book collection that I've kept for the last 20 years. You'd you think. Think. <laughs> you'd think that reading all those books would have triggered me, but no, it took – I mean, it really took a brick wall uh, to open my eyes. So to all of you who are, down, who are out there <laughs> who have matched my hundreds of my, – my, my collection of hundreds of personal development books, I say to, I say to thee, <laughs> I say to you, you know, um, reading is one thing. Uh, theory is one thing. But it's time to – I invite you to step into – Whatever it is that you've always wanted to do in life, and, and that's why I love the theme of the show, to find your groove, because it really resonated with me. Uh, and I know that I haven't looked back since, because once you step into your groove, that once you make that decision, without knowing all the how-tos, without knowing all the steps, just the decision to do it and to take that leap of faith and to have that trust in yourself and the universe and in spirit or the divine, whatever you want to call it, it opens up so many doors to well you have no idea you have yes. no idea so yeah. i went from a local audience here well audience i guess a few colleagues here somewhere in an office in an industrial estate near amsterdam and now i'm speaking to live audiences i do events around the world and it's all because opportunities have arisen simply because i've stepped up and i'm i'm certainly nobody special Really, I'm not a special person. I've just owned up to whatever it is that I have to give to the world and surrendered that for, to, to a higher guidance to open up these opportunities for me. And that's really, it's, it's as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> Bam, you're right. Absolutely. When, um, yeah, and that's why they call all those books, they, that's why they call it shelf help instead of self help. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Because that's, yeah. that's what it becomes. And, you know, same with me. I mean, that is something that has always been part of my life from such a young age was personal development, human behavior. Why do we do what we do? And, you know, it's interesting that we're somewhat similar um, in our wake up call moments. It was the same for me waking up one morning, couldn't stand or walk. Yeah. Um, now, it wasn't as severe as you. I, I, and all, I forced my doctor to send me to a neurologist. Um, but you know, it. I look back and I see how I created that in my life in a in, yeah. a, in a way that made it look like I wasn't having to make the bold step to make a change out yeah. of what I was doing, yeah. that I absolutely created that. And you're right. When, when you finally step into that and use your strengths and, and step in towards at least, and it's the not knowing, I think, is what keeps mm. people stuck. They don't see that path. They don't see how it's possible. And that's what keeps people stuck. So people like you and I can go, you know what, I didn't know what it was going to look like. Mm. But but we got this major wake-up call where we're on our backs going, holy crap, is this my life now? <laughs> yeah. To, you know, like, is yeah. this it? Like, yeah. I'm, I, like <laughs> what's going to happen now? Yeah. We don't want people to get to that point. And, no, no. But I guess for some people, um, some people are faster learners than you and I. <laughs> um, but once you step into that, you don't know exactly what it's going to look like. But holy man, the world yeah. opens up. Yeah, yeah. And it really does. But I, I totally get it, you know, because we are, you and I are also from – uh, well, we've been socially conditioned uh, yeah. to, to – you know, we come from school. Uh, it's even on our culture to find a steady job, have a steady income, get a mortgage, you know, have 2.2 oh. 2 children, whatever it is that, that society dictates. And, and, and not just that, but even our parents, our parents' parents are, were, uh, they were living in a different world where, yeah. where, you know, you really did have to buckle down and, uh, find security, uh, in a, a monthly paycheck. And many people were living, you know, m- um, uh, month to month and, uh, didn't have any savings or anything, and and not that I had much savings when I left the corporate world, not at all. But there was a there was a bigger uh, desire, bigger yearning to to move forward. And I, there's one other thing I wanted to say about the conditioning. And and you know we are we, we often looked at our at our bank accounts for our happiness and for our success. And you know we look at the balance in a bank account and we let that dictate what we cannot do in our lives. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And what I encourage my 
uh, clients do and, and their clients is to look beyond that and to look beyond the, the conditioning, the money, the financial conditioning and look towards a more trusting and uh, conditioning of faith. Uh, again, the, the, the faith in, in all sense of the word, whatever, you, whatever feels comfortable for you, but faith primarily in ourselves and our own abilities. Particularly people of my age group who are now past their 40s, they've already had some life experience, certainly have had some work experience and, ed- and education in many cases. So there's a wealth of experience and knowledge to draw on. Uh, it's not like you know, you're, you're uh, let's say, 20 years old and being asked us to start a company by the way. Now, you've, you've got this wealth of experience that we sometimes forget about or even just don't value. Um, you know, whether it's just f- with, with, work, with working in projects at, a, at an office or, uh, or going through divorce, something personal like that. These are all experiences that can really help you uh, or us as individuals to help other people. And that's really what, what uh, really uh, ex- excels me forward and motivates me is to really help people to lose that old conditioning and to step into that, that power and that trust. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. What do you um, think that, what were, what are your greatest strengths that you've drawn upon that maybe you didn't realize moving forward after this and really, you know, after this happened for you, that's when you really got into the coaching world. What, what are your greatest strengths? I think one of the first things is that uh, because my mother was mentally ill for many, many years uh, as a child, I'm very used to being a listening ear in the family. So um, it was very, it came quite natural to me to listen, to ask questions, to get people to think about their actions and what they're going going through. Um, so that is really something that is certainly one of my strengths. The other thing is that for some reason as a child, I also love to uh, act, you know, get on the stage and be in plays and musicals and things like that. So being in front of an audience has always been, uh, always felt very comfortable for me. Um, I, there's also an exhilaration to it, but I was, funnily enough, I, f- I find it often easier to be on the stage talking to you know hundreds of people than to be in the audience uh, having to think about what's what's being what's being asked of me or what's being presented to me at the same time that that also helps me when I present to structure it in such a way that there's there's lots of engagement and that there that I deliver my message in you know, kinesthetically uh, visually and uh, and and auditorily so it's I make sure that there are many different elements in, in my presentation so I think drawing on those two skills is is really helped me to to move me forward absolutely those are very important skills in in yeah. terms of what we do now uh, I very interesting what you said about how you find it more comfortable for you to be in front of a large crowd rather than being in the crowd and having to respond to something that's asked of you yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're the, okay. Uh, the, this very interesting that you said. We are so similar. This is really. <laughs> this is because I discovered about myself um, the. I don't know, within the last year, I would find that I would, if I was in front of a group, lead groups, that I was really, really comfortable with that. But if I was in a group and I would be called upon to, you know, speak very briefly or I had to do something, I would find myself very uncomfortable and nervous. And I thought, why is that? I stand in front of groups and I talk. Why am I nervous? So I haven't totally figured that out, but have you? Do you know why that is? Well, I've, I've never no. heard anybody say that. <laughs> what I do know for sure is that when I'm in groups, uh, or no, when I'm doing something that I, um, when I'm out of my zone of genius and in my zone of excellence, which is ah. a step, step lower, when I'm when I'm in my zone of comfort or excellence, then I'm actually quite introvert. But when I step into my genius, my zone of genius, when I'm really doing the thing that I'm very passionate about, then I become extrovert. It's so odd. Um, but it really no. does, 
but it yeah. doesn't. <laughs> right? That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. So for, for all those years, many managers were telling me, "Well, you know, you should speak up more. You know, you, know, you do have an opinion there, but maybe you should just, you know, get out there a little bit more and put yourself forward in in the projects and 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 and, and get involved in groups and at, at work." And I just just didn't feel it. I just didn't feel it. And then when I started doing this work and then reminiscing back to my time as a child performing, then I kind of thought, ah, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a bridge here between doing things that you really are good at and love to do and feel passionate about and, and, and feeling, uh, uh, and being extrovert and having yeah. that energy. And, and I call it, um, uh, confident energy. Some people call it passion, but I think that's one of those words that's kind of get overused. So I like to kind of strip it down to confident energy. And that's how I feel when I'm in that zone. That, so you've noticed this too? Oh, yeah. And I just thought, well, this is bizarre. This does not make sense. Uh, like I, I, I don't have an issue speaking to a, a room full of people, a big group. Mm-hmm. Why why am I having this issue for – so I thought, okay, but I was at least grateful. I recognized it. I didn't know exactly, you know, I thought that's odd, but at least I recognized it, that I was much more careful. And now that you say that in your zone of genius, when you're doing what, you meant, when you're, what you're meant to be doing, it just – it is just comfortable. It is just – it's comfortable. Yeah. So I was glad that I, that I recognized that. Um, how do you recharge? Do you find you're mostly introverted? Where you're most comfortable? What do you need to do? What works for you to find your groove again, to, to re- refill, recharge, re-energize? Yes, I love that. Well, what I've noticed since becoming an entrepreneur, and more so than being in the corporate world, is that creativity um, has its peaks and you know has its... It's moments where you know, you're down, and and really, it's important to notice that and to respect that. So, you know, when I when I have my downtime, um, I t- do take a walk for about an hour, maybe three quarters of an hour, um, every day uh, outside my house. I, I overlook the meadows just outside of Amsterdam, and mm-hmm. there's a, a river going into Amsterdam, which is just around the corner from my house I and mean, there's lots of windmills dot it's very, it's very beautiful it's very quintessential dutch but it's all these windmills and in the in the springtime like now there are tulips everywhere it's just really beautiful so that's the moment where i re- recharge on a daily basis but there are also some moments where i have like a marathon of work that i you know work for maybe a, a month on a particular project very very intensely and but then I, I we also live quite next or quite close to the to the beach as well because Holland is on the or the Netherlands is on the west coast of Central Europe so we have about five hundred kilometers maybe three hundred miles of coastline facing west which is great because then just as, as you in British Columbia and Canada you have the setting sun and it's just a wonderful time of the day yeah. just to take a walk and along the beach so that's really what I like to do I, I love nature I love the beach I love the what, hearing the waves crashing in uh, and for me nature is the time that I replenish my energy um, to get out of the house inside the house obviously we have we have our four seasons over here uh, and in the winter I often um, well I have a daily meditation practice anyway but I really tend to extend my meditation practice in the winter months for up to 20 to 30 minutes. And in the summertime, maybe about 10, um, because my energy levels are already up. And in the summertime, I've noticed that my creativity yeah. levels are, are quite high. So that's, that's really my routine. It's What's so your- great when we can recognize these things about ourselves. Yeah, yeah. It just makes it so much easier, so much easier. That's true. Um. Oh, we have so many similarities. Our stories are so, and the way we are and the way we operate, it's so similar. That's why I love connecting with people around the world. It's just, I love it. Um, so a lot of the work that you specialize in the mastery of the inner psychology and the outer steps and strategies, I absolutely believe that key thing is really mastering who you are and and that inner chatter, that inner psychology that goes on for people who are struggling so that, you know, they've just, they've hit the ceiling, they're 
paralyzed in moving through life, not physically like you were, but they're just paralyzed. They can't move the fear. They don't see how there's any way possible. And they keep telling themselves that this is where they're going to be. How do people begin? What are some things that that maybe people that are listening to right now that are just feeling so down and stuck begin moving out of that? Sure. So what I love about this type of work is is the as a coach you do get a time to a lot of time to reflect upon your own business and your own mindset but also uh, you do that with your clients as well mm-hmm. and what I've come to know for sure is that really we have no excuse you know it's our own responsibility to make our own make our dreams come true do the things that we want to do and inevitably when we start to point the uh, the the finger of blame at parents or upbringing or colleagues, managers, even loved ones, it's because we're not owning up to that. We're not owning up to our gifts. We're, we are maybe not even aware or able to uh, step into it. But it, it's really just about uh, cultivating this awareness that we are intrinsically responsible. We don't have to wait for for perfect circumstances. We don't have to wait for the perfect people in our lives or for people to give us permission. We don't have to wait for permission. We have to create permission. We have to create these things to do. So, nice. so really for me is you know, dealing with the fear of moving forward, which we all have. So a, a couple of tips that I have and, and that I give to my clients is that now, just realize that fear and curiosity, these two things cannot exist the mind in the mind at the same time. True. You're either fearful or you're curious. And I invite people to, to switch to thinking, hey, I'm curious about my future. I'm curious about how far I could go. Not, oh, I'm fearful of, of my future. I'm fearful of, of what might happen. No, be curious be curious, not not fearful. That's that's the start. It's and yeah. for me that was a real eye opener to understand that those two things cannot be in, in our consciousness at the same time. So the other thing is what's really helped me, but this is quite recent that I've wanted to share is that I have um, noticed that I have a, I have a, a mantra that I use, and it really helps me to to dim my inner critic and. My mantra is, how can I make the world a better place? And I repeat this mantra daily in my meditation, and I just let the answers come. I don't think of how I'm going to do it. It's just asking the question and putting the energy out there into the universe is what's going to give me the creativity and the inspiration to move forward. So that's really a a great tip, I think, for someone who's out there uh, thinking, oh, how, how can I do this? What should I do? And how am I going to move forward? Just... Take this mantra, make it your own, perhaps change the words if you want, but just ask the question, how can I make the world a better place? Because that's really what we're here to do. That's right. We're not here to sit in front of the TV and watch the, watch the Kardashians uh, uh, for hours and hours and hours. We're not? No. <laughs> We're here to make the world a better place. Whether we, whether we believe that or not, that is what we're here to do. So... You either step into that and own it or, or not. And But the other thing is, you touched on, on, on this, I think, right from the beginning, is that um, what often comes up is this feeling of, well, you know, who am I to do this? You know, And there are so many other people in this world doing the type of work I want to do. So uh, they will fall into this trap of um, unworthiness or not being able to really understand their value, you know, what their value is in life, and to own that value. So there's this wonderful quote by Elizabeth Gilbert in her book Magic when she says, uh, and I just love it so much, I want to share it with the audience, that base your self-worth not on your failures or successes, but on your dedication to your path. Mm-hmm. Because as an entrepreneur, when you step into this world, you're going to fail. You are going to fail. So the, the greatest fear that you have about moving forward and perhaps becoming an entrepreneur and doing this one thing you want to do in life is that you fail. Well, you are going to fail. So get over it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, yeah, but you're going to learn a lot from that failure. You're going to uh, off the, from those failures. You're going to learn. And if when you get to see those failures as learning steps, as a learning curve to your successes, but to keep going, stay dedicated to your path, 
and hard, work hard and be patient, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. The doors are going to open and you're going to feel this tremendous joy of being able to wake up in the morning and do the work that you really want to do in life and feel good about it and feel motivated and to have this coming back to you uh, tenfold uh, in, in terms of the, 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 the results you get for people, the, the compliments you get from people. Yes, the monetary success as well. But for me, money is just an exchange of energy. So I will give my, I will exchange my gifts and my coaching for a monetary exchange. So you now people have, a lot of people get hung up about money, but it really is just an exchange of value. That's what we have to see, see it as. It's just a marker to measure. Yeah. It's not really, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we could we could be paying in peanuts. I mean, it's just it's just something. It's just a marker. Exactly. It's what you were saying <clears throat> reminds me of like um, reminds me of what Brandon Bouchard when he had that pivotal moment in his life when he was in a car accident and he almost died and you know the questions that he had asked himself: Did I love well? Did I live well? I I think there was four questions. Yeah. And you know, we all have our own questions when we come to these moments in our life. And I'm sure you did too when you found out what, when you became paralyzed. And for me too, when I ended up on my back for four months, not yes. being able to walk, you know, you, you ask those hard questions of yourself. Yes. And those, see, without those moments, those crappy moments, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. We wouldn't be in our own zone of genius. So, in Carl's words, I invite you, listener, to uh, get curious. And if, if you're going through these tough times in your life, ask the questions of yourself because it's questions that will lead you out of that. You don't need to know how. I always say you just need to know the why and the what and the dots will connect themselves. Yes. I love that. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. So you had mentioned a, um, a little bit early in the show about how, you know, you have these moments of how you work really hard and, you're, and you hustle and then you have your downtimes and you recognize that moment. You know, it's interesting. It made me think earlier in the year I was at this business conference and um, one of the speakers was talking about the trends for the year. And one of the trends was um, that, you know, we're in this world right now where people want it all. And I, I, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I think we should want more. This is what helps us grow. But um, we're in that, you know, we just run hard and then we stop. Hmm. And I think that's why retreats are so, uh, are so, uh, what's the word? Not common, but retreats are very popular right now and so beneficial for people because we are, and I am one of those people too, that I will work really hard and I recognize, okay, I'm starting to work too hard now. Now I need that downtime. And you have an amazing retreat coming up. And I want you to tell the listeners about this retreat and when it starts and where it is. And oh my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> Let us yeah. know. Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, so for the the third year in a row now, we are doing a a Tuscany retreat uh, called the Eat, Pray, Learn Tuscany Retreat. And it's really a place where aspiring and experienced coaches can come to uh, create momentum, money, and magic with their coaching business with, with joy and with ease and this beautiful, inspirational environment. It's in the Tuscan hills, the green luscious hills, the freshness of the air, the crispness. Uh, it's, it's next to the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. We've got this beautiful climate and this exquisite house, villa, uh, exclusive for all of our other participants. Uh, it's, a, it's a family-owned uh, uh, retreat and they have all the, the garden and food and herbs are all grown or organically on this estate right next to the vineyards they have 20 acres of vineyards where they grow the grapes of the Chianti wine and yes we sip the Chianti wine every evening and we toast (laughs) (laughs) and and it's just enchanting it's just a it's a place an inspirational place with the energy there just the energy levels are so amazing and we get people from all over the world who come in who want no to doubt. really sharpen the saw of their business to get all, of course, all the business steps 
to go for, to get from where they wa- are now to where they want to be, to get the business clarity, get their mission nailed down so they know exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it. Really important. Also to look at the programs they offer their clients and, okay, how – are they aligned with your business mission and your bigger why? Or do we need to have to, to tweak it and massage it or start from scratch and build a new program for you so that your customers are, are, are finding your work irresistible and that you, because you really understand their, their pain points, and their deepest desires. Then we look at the whole marketing around that. And marketing has got a bit of a bad rap over the years. But oh, yes. it, essentially, it's just communicating our value and doing it in a way, particularly from a, from a coaching perspective, with an authentic, sincere voice, one that's from the heart, one that's personal, and one that really resonates with your clients. So we really spend a lot of time nailing that and spending some time making sure that your voice is authentic and aligned with who you truly are in all of your communication. And then we spend mm-hmm. a fourth day, oh, the, the fourth day is actually about mindset and this high performance mindset to, to really nail how to stay energized, how to stay motivated, how to deal with these barking dogs, as I call them, <laughs> barking dogs in our minds. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> which, you know, which is saying, uh, which are barking away, saying, hey, you're not good enough, or you're not worthy, and who am I and uh, to be doing this work, and uh, somebody else is better than me. So these are the barking dogs that we all have. You know, it's very normal to have these thoughts. But there are processes, there's a system to go through to understand how you can deal with it and to, to push through anyway. So we spend a whole half day on that. And then we also look at how to implement everything so that when people go back from the, the, this week-long transformational adventure, that they have a concrete action plan of all the steps that they have to take and the priorities to do them in so they have know exactly what to do and when to do it moving on. And one of the great things about this retreat is I know that when people go back home, you know, go back to the distractions of everyday life, go back to the daily yeah. routines, that they're going to have questions. They're going to need help to make this all happen and to implement everything they learn at the retreat. So what I do is I've put together, included in the retreat package, three months of support. We get on the phone, a whole group support. It's, it's fantastic. We have this oh, wonderful nice. Zoom so we can all see each other again and reconnect and have fun and we just help each other and move each other through imp- implementing everything we learned at the retreat for, for three months. So yes, it's a week in Tuscany which is amazing but we're actually all together, not just actually for the week and even not just for the three months but people who came three years ago are still together, still have their own mastermind, still have their group and are doing great together. So yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's beautiful. Sounds fabulous. <laughs> when does this happen? Okay, so we've just had one in uh, April, and the next one is already planned from the 1st until the 8th of October, nice. or for our North American friends, uh, October 1st to the 8th. <laughs> 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 and nice. uh, uh, it's going to be another fantastic, fantastic week uh, and adventure. So we've already opened up registrations. I should say we only have a limited spaces. We do mm-hmm. sell out this retreat pretty fast. So uh, you've caught me at a very good time at this registration. Actually, you are, you're, getting, <laughs> you're getting the exclusive So because we only opened up registration uh, two days ago. So this Ooh. is fantastic. And if anyone wants to register and uh, or at least find out some more information first about it and watch the videos, and not just me uh, talking on the video, but watch all the testimonials and reviews from everyone who's been to the retreat then I invite your listeners to come over to eatpraylearn.com, eatpraylearn.com, and there they can find all the information and a registration form to uh, to connect with me because I, I am quite selective about who I let come to the retreat. It's obviously sure. you want to make sure that everyone is very like-minded, very heart-centered, very supportive of one another, but also you know want to move forward and are willing to do the work and willing to do what it takes to, to do so. But it's so important that everyone has this heart-centered energy. So what I do is when people sign up with a name and email address to connect with me, We'll just go through a simple uh, kind of application call, a strategy call, as I call it, where I actually do give some value to everybody who comes onto the call with me. And then, obviously, if it's if it's a good fit for us to work together, then that would be a good moment to give some more details about the retreat and to talk about the investment. Nice, 
Nice. Well, that's a week in Tuscany. Whoa. That <laughs> sounds fabulous. So that's happening in October. So eatpraylearn.com to get the info and to connect with you to, uh, to see if it's a, a go. Yes, great. I know there's other ways for people to get in touch with you. So if you can let us know, let the listeners know how to reach out to you, learn more about you. Sure. Sure. So people can find me and all my social media connections and read my blog and my, uh, more about the retreat and the work that I do and working with me either on one-on-one basis or my group coaching calls and, of course, the retreat at carlbrooks.com. carlbrooks.com. Carl with a C and uh, Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S, carlbrooks.com. Nice. And you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and everybody can connect with you through your website there. Yes. Your- Excellent. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, I – oh, that sounds that sounds fabulous. Is it great in Tuscany in October? I've never been. It's beautiful. It's kind of like an Indian summer. And mm-hmm. what was – What's so different about April? April was great too because obviously the, the, the leaves are fresh on the, on the trees. But in the autumn, you get the colors, the vibrant colors, the oranges, the browns, the reds. Yeah. And, and of course, that's the time when they are harvesting so the, the grapes for the wine. So it's just so wonderful to experience this and to see them at work and to drink the, the Chianti wine made on the estate and enjoy the finer things in life without counting calories. Because yeah. <laughs> this, this is your week. This is a week away from your distractions of everyday life in, the, in this, this environment of, of tranquility and bliss. And this is, this is the, a week of permission, people, permission to learn something, permission to, to absorb to be. energy, to be, to, to eat and drink whatever you want because it's organic. You know, there's no, there's no, this, it's all from, from the estate there's no additives in there it's just pure food and let me tell you your body i've noticed it your your energy levels go up when you are treating yourself to organic food for a week week. and it doesn't matter what it is because it's all made with love and it's all made organically it's just it's a wonderful experience sounds like heaven carl (laughs) sounds like heaven it is so we are out of time, but I just want to finish. I'd like to finish this one last thing. I'd like to ask my guests to finish this sentence for me. Ready? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Carl Brooks is? Carl Brooks is a business coach who likes to help other coaches to get their great gifts out into the world. In their zone of genius. In their zone of genius. Love I like it. that addition. <laughs> Wonderful. Love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate what you do and for being here and to reach out, reaching out and connecting. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you too. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I just want to give a big shout out to all your audience. And I'd love to be in co- contact with you. Hope to hear from you soon. And if, if you need anything from me, you know where to find me. It's been a pleasure today. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, one last time, carlbrooks.com and eatpraylearn.com. Reach out. You can hear what a fabulous guy he is. So reach (laughs) out for sure and and talk with him. If you're interested in learning more about coaching, maybe you think it's something that you want to do, you can reach out to either one of us. But, um, you know, definitely reach out. You know, we are not for lack of resources in this world. We need to strengthen the resourcefulness muscle within ourselves. So reach out, do that. Eatpraylearn.com, learn about the Tuscany Retreat and carlbrooks.com. Thank you again, Carl. I so appreciate it. I'm so glad we connected and uh, I'm so happy to know you and, uh, and this resource that I can share with other people as well. So thank you. Have a fabulous weekend. Thank you, too. I've enjoyed it so much. I really appreciate it. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I know you found your groove, and you're going to carry it with you through the weekend. I thank you so much for joining me. If you know of somebody that uh, would make a great guest or somebody that could use this message that we shared today, please share these episodes. You can find them, connect with them all at my website at lynnbrunette.com. And until next time, remember, everybody, you Have the power. Bye for now. 